get to be the first woman in the world to set this record, to become the fastest human on a bicycle. Okay, go ahead and light it up. I could most certainly have died doing this. The violent nature of the wind was almost closing in on me. And it was a terrifying ride. My name is Denise Mueller Karenik. I am a mother, a CEO, and a competitive cyclist. I'm going after a record that is held for 23 years by a man named Fred Rompelberg, the overall land speed record on a bicycle of 167 miles an hour. I think people are confused by this record. They just can't fathom a cyclist going 170 miles an hour. This record is unique as it requires a motorized vehicle in front of me to bore a hole through the wind. That draft creates a pocket of air. An air pocket that I surf and that allows us to go 167 miles per hour. It's not a safe endeavor at all. I'm John Howard, and I have been a, a cyclist most of my life. I held the record from 1985 until about 1995. I love training with John, because John's like a diesel. I'm a sprinter. This is not the first time I've done it. In 2016, I was the first female to go after the Pace Bicycle Land Speed record. I'm out there to take the overall record in 2018. Men have done it since 1899. I get to be the first woman. It was a no-brainer, I'm doing it. There's not many cyclists out there that would want to even attempt this. I, I think it's safe to say that almost every everyone that's ever attempted this has had close calls. This is a dangerous venture and she could get hurt, yes. I believe it was Jean-Claude Rude who crashed in some form of a training or drafting accident and he died. In 1988, Fred Rompelberg was going after John Howard's record and he crashed. I was there when it happened. He went up in the air, his bike went even higher. I'm, I'm gonna estimate at least 10 feet off the salt, catapult through the air, and it was, it was horrible watching this. We scraped him off the salt, got him to the hospital. He was in intensive care for three days. Um, I, I was afraid we might actually lose Fred. The risks, I really don't discuss with my family. They do think it's a bit crazy, but they also know that I do a lot of homework to make sure I'm as safe as possible. The sense of responsibility is a huge weight. I'm Shay Holbrook and I'm a professional race car driver and I am Denise's pacing driver for the Pace Bicycle Land Speed Record. The force of the wind would definitely not allow me to go over probably good 30 or 40, 50 miles an hour. That is why there's a race car, so I can draft behind it. I see that she's with me, I start to accelerate. If she starts to back out, I have to hold. So it's this constant fluid motion of us going back and forth. They have to be able to literally read each other's minds. You have to have that really, really tight trust. When we first met, the first conversation we had was supposed to be super brief. We ended up being on the phone for an hour and a half. We just had such great vibes. The car we chose was the, the exact car that uh, Fred used back in the 90s. And so I get the opportunity to break Fred's record with Fred's car. The bicycle is not a normal bicycle by any means. It is 100% custom. It has only one purpose, and that's to be ridden very, very fast. 
we have what's commonly referred to as a double reduction gearing. And what that means is that gear will travel 138 feet per revolution of the pedals. And then we also have 17 inch motorcycle rims and motorcycle tires. So when we got out there, there were still many things that were left undone. The car was sitting for 23 years, having last run when Fred used the vehicle. We had a lot of last minute things to get this ready. We had a leak in the front right tire. We had to fix that. We had to put a new tack in. We had to get the camera systems. We had to get the fire system. A lot of people have been stressed. You, you put all this time in to show up and not be able to do the damn thing. I mean, that would be a failure. in I think a lot of people's eyes, as it certainly would be mine. Getting that yellow sheet of paper saying that we have passed tech was an enormous relief. Coming together, Rex. Believe it or not, oh, <laughs> it's gonna happen, buddy. And you're gonna be here. Is this car running for you? It's good, yeah, it's, yeah, it's running really well. Thank you. All right, you guys, have a great time. Bonneville is the place where you go to set records. It's very humbling to be in line at Bonneville. When the conditions are good at Bonneville, it is extraordinarily fast. Cars that are going 480 some odd miles an hour. People come up and go, you're doing this on a bicycle? You're nuts. So I'm sitting at the line, I'm getting ready to go, and a lot of nerves came into a play. That's not it, that's not it. You know, they call it the call of the salt, but it's a very deep anxiety producing experience when you hear the ground shake. That huge power plant that's uh, about to rocket up the salt with you behind it. I'm trying to be very focused. I'm trying to breathe. Push out any thoughts of negativeness, of falling and crashing. I'm good. I'm good. I mean, you could have the engine blow, the transmission seize. We could blow a tire and have shrapnel come in throwing at me at a hundred and some odd miles an hour. Day starts out, I get towed. We are on track. It's all coming back. This is possible. I'm able to do this. We're moving closer to the goal. Then I get the signal from Shay that we had prearranged. The red light says release. And at that, that point, I'm realizing something just wasn't right. The moment I left the line, with, within two feet, I knew the GPS mile per hour wasn't working. I knew we were in trouble because I was gonna have to guesstimate what speed we were going. I started having to pedal and pedal and pedal so hard. You were about 105. Huh? You were about 105. Yeah, it felt slow. Go get her. Do you think that it was so hard because we were going so slow? I'm not supposed to release till 110. I'm not able to push the pedals. You went I was pushing max. the pedals like someone had put the hardest gear in my life on the bike and made me go slow. uphill. Once I figured out what had occurred on that run and the sense of relief it came, I knew, okay, we're good to go. It's time to go for the record. Did it build your confidence? 
Not until I found out what happened. <laughs> okay, so you thought you were... I thought we, my, my GPS was wrong and she was going 130 and I was working my butt off. Once I get that gear to where I can legitimately turn it over, we're golden. And I felt a bit of the draft at 110. Oh, okay. Flat tire. Oh, okay. I did find out there was an issue that absolutely had to be dealt with and now there was a rear tire on the dragster, one of those huge 32 inch tires, and it was leaking air. Next steps, right now we have a, a tire issue that we'll need to deal with. We're done for today. You know, I always cut the black wire, you know? Hopefully I can go around that. So on Saturday morning, we are there trying to find our solution for our tire, and we're working towards that, and here comes the winds. It's blowing about 20, 25 knots right now. It's impossible to run under those circumstances. And now everything's shut down. The event is stopped. There goes an entire day of opportunity. It really ended up sinking in that this may not happen. We may have just had our only opportunity behind the dragster with the bike, and it was a failure, basically. Let's say something happens to the dragster. If the car is erratic, if I don't feel it's controllable, I'm gonna have to leave you. Even, oh yeah, even if it's because I may have chunks coming back or whatever. You yeah. never know what's gonna go. Cool. The next morning, John, Shay, and I are on our way out to the salt flats. Shay is looking at the fact of what happens if something she's in control of causes an issue and how she needs to deal you know, with it. And when Fred fell, Fred didn't fall because he fell. He fell because the car was never the right car. I cannot imagine what it's like to have that responsibility of a cyclist behind you that if you do one wrong move, you're taking that person down. We take our e-bikes out and it's just Shay and I. You have to have that camaraderie and that really, really tight trust. She's kind of like the sister I never had. That turned into like being on the same frequency. start line. It is no more trial run. Let's see how we do. It is let's try for this record. So we get up to the line and we're about next to go and then all of a sudden delay. There was debris on the track. Definitely don't want to hit any debris. We're sitting there at the start line ready to go and it's just waiting. Oh yeah. It's almost like Zen Everybody around her is nervous. They've got jobs to do, but you look at her, she is always calm, always collected. Nothing seems to bother her. <laughs> We're ready for nap. We're given the go ahead. Good, 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 good. Denise is ready. Jay, you ready? Neutral and clear. And those engines start. mile an hour run and this run are completely different. The wind is so much more intense. It was a lot rougher air. I start going to the right a little, then I'm the left, and it's almost like I was a pinball in there in slow motion. Close. I've always been trying to, to drive in such a way to be within her limits. So 155.9 something. 
average speed. So the new women's record is 155 miles an hour, but that's not why we're here. We're here to break the overall. You feel that I can still pull you faster, right? Oh yeah. We had at least beaten my coach John Howard's record. We have the second fastest oh. human in the world. Not even the first. I'm now got my eye on Fred's. Coming up will be the Project Speed. Plymouth Muir Coronex. That vehicle is being driven by Shay Holbrook. I think I'm actually going to have to talk about this dragster. I have to put the foot legitimately to the floor. Breathe, breathe. Getting to the start line and getting prepared to go, this run is just like any other run. Are you ready to go? I'm ready. Yeehaw! underway right now. Everything is different from the moment we take off. Looking at the bicycle, pedaling behind the laser as it accelerates away from the line. The speed at which we increase is phenomenally faster. About 130 miles an hour. Now we're going 140 miles an hour. There is the potential that she pulls the bike so fast, I can't hold on to it. I'm not going to leave with regrets like I had two years ago. It is release time. Here we go. And they're approaching the uh, two-mile board here. And it got intense very quickly. She released and pedaled all the way by herself for mile marker two. You know what the second mile time is here? 157 so far. The vibration continues to increase. I'm feeling the air hitting me on the left and the right. It's a guessing game. Uh, am I going to be able to hold on? The drone of the wind getting louder and louder. Mile marker three. See if she goes through the third mile. All this fine salt, and it is pelting the back of my throat. I'm inhaling it through my nose. Four. And I had a few moments where my front wheel came very close to the side of the fairing on the left. When you see the knee out, you know there's a real and present threat. Five. And she says, we're done. And I butt up against the vehicle with my bump bar, and she's slowing me down about 70 some odd miles an hour in less than a mile. I didn't know if I was able to keep that bike upright that much longer. I literally prayed. At 110 miles an hour, I separate out the back end of the air pocket and allow the wind to slow me down. The first thought was I survived. <laughs> it, it honestly was, I survived. Now, all I can hope for is that this one was something that was fast enough to break the record. <laughs> Okay, the times on the... You got it. You got it? A hundred percent. You went 180, I think, six on the last mile. The last mile speed of 183.93243. You're officially the world's fastest bike rider. Seeing the timing slip just solidified everything that we did it. So she has done it. She is now the fastest human on a bicycle. 183.93. <laughs> No one on a bicycle has ever ridden as fast as I've ridden at 183.9 miles an hour, and it feels pretty darn good. Nobody's done it. 183.9. Not it. She's the only person in the world. What did you do? 183.98. You wanted 70, 180. I wanted 170 and we got 183. Well, let me see oh, if you'll yeah. you tingle when I hit you. Woo! Oh, I just wanted to go 170. 
Didn't realize you were gonna pass the whole 170s and go straight into the 180s. Oh, hold your ass. <laughs> this is something I will remember for the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. Damn. Nothing is out of reach if you're willing to do the hard work for it. Set a goal, do the work, and enjoy the ride.